When you're ready to set up your SQL Server, you will want to first check to make sure you're using certified hardware at our website, check to make sure you meet the system requirements, make sure you have the .NET 4.0 installed, and that you have the latest Windows updates set up. You then need to choose the SQL Server that is appropriate for your uh, deployment. This includes the SQL Server 2008 or 2012, 32-bit or 64-bit editions of the Express, Standard, Enterprise, or Data Center editions of SQL Server. Once you've chosen a version of SQL Server and downloaded it, you'll simply uh, double-click on the installation and choose Run. This will begin the extraction process, and this may take several minutes. When presented with the installation server, choose New SQL Server Standalone Installation. SQL Server will normally go through a process of checking to make sure that it has the right support rules and validating your system. In our case, um, you'll need to accept the licensing terms, and the version of SQL Server I'm using will automatically download the latest updated version. If you're using this style of SQL Server, once you're presented with the included uh, updates, which is usually a great idea, simply click Next and allow the system to download the updates and continue with this installation process and this process may take several minutes. The system will then start the process of installing, installing your SQL Server. Uh, in our case, we're going to do a new installation. We are going to choose all the features, but at minimum you do need the database engine and SQL Server replication. You'll normally have a default instance that will be filled in called SQL Express. As we've installed this before, I'm going to create a new instance called Zara and let it automatically fill in there for me. You'll then be presented with a SQL Server configuration. The SQL Server database engine should be set to automatic, and the SQL Server browser normally by default is set to disabled. I normally like to set mine to automatic during my installation process, and we'll go back and disable it for security reasons once I've finished all my installation. In our case, I'm going to leave mine to automatic and click Next. SQL Server will then give you an additional options for security of using Windows Authentication or Mixed Mode. Mixed Mode allows you to create a SQL Server username as password as well as use your Windows Authentication. I usually do recommend that you go ahead and create a complex password in here and uh, that way you do have the ability to use SQL Server in several different ways. Go ahead and click Next. It'll ask you some information about reporting and give you some privacy statements. This is completely optional. It will then begin the installation process. This again may take several minutes. Once finished, SQL Server will return to the installation center and you're free to go ahead and exit that page. You'll then want to launch the SQL Server Configuration Manager. This will allow you to uh, configure your SQL Server. Start by going into the network configuration, expanding your uh, SQL Server instance name, clicking on TCP IP pipes, and changing 
the enable to yes and hit apply and okay. You will need to start your SQL server um, once that finishes. So highlight your SQL server here and you can just click the restart service. You're now actually ready to, to have remote connections. Go ahead and exit this software when it finishes restarting your SQL server. Once you finish your installation, you'll be able to click refresh in the Xero Manager. And from the drop down with SQL Server names, you'll choose your SQL Server from a list of SQL Servers that may be there. Depending on how many SQL Servers are on your network, you may only have one or two that you've recently installed, or if you're in your office, you may have multiples uh, that you can find. Simply choose your SQL Server, choose your authentication type, and hit login to actually connect to that SQL Server. You'll then be able to choose a variety of database maintenance tasks depending on what you're looking to do next.